Appoggio is a diaphragmical balanced way of vocal breathing or support that allows singing in one register without forcing one's voice. Vast majority of opera and classical singers use registral divisions in their technique. Great minority of singers who don't use registral division still think they use registral divisions. At first glance it seems very complicated, but it's not really a complicated issue. The confusion always lies in our personal sensations. Every singer professional or not professional, who is approaching so-called registers like chest, passaggio or head voice registers, it's a traditional division among uh, singers and uh, teachers, is experiencing so-called change of feel, change of sensations and also difficulties to get to those places, to those so-called registers. And when an individual student or a singer experiencing this, the teacher tells him, oh, you're now in a passaggio range, you're now in a passaggio register, so we have to do something about it, we have to do, definitely you have to do something about it. But the approach of appoggio is different of that of another schools. Real appoggio teacher will tell you not to put it in the nose, not to try to find some other placement, but rather support it, balance it diaphragmically, and with his guidance, the student can achieve one register singing without thinking of different registers. Of course, I just repeat what I, I said before, any classical singer, uh, not only classical, but let's say, let's uh, limit ourselves of looking at classical singers, any classical singer, especially opera singer, uses diaphragm, whether he's conscious of it or not, because otherwise he will not sustain a long phrase and enough power to sing in opera. But most of the singers use diaphragm as a kind of passive opposition to low abdominal muscles. Balances it usually within the very natural range of a tenor, baritone, or soprano, the ones called middle range, uh, just below passaggio area and a little bit above uh, the lowest chest area. In that area, the diaphragm works kind of um, naturally and without much thinking about it. And in a way, a mind that controls, or subconsciousness that controls this diaphragm uh, is um, getting asleep, because it's kind of the same type of pressure. It doesn't have to think about another type of pressure, balancing another type of pressure. But when we approach passaggio area, uh, then we have a problems because that passive opposition of the diaphragm is not enough to balance beautiful and unregistered singing or one register singing. Uh, well, we live in democratic society and uh, by, by this uh, kind of uh, way of thinking, we think that democracy is always a vital system in any way you can apply it, and opera you can apply democracy. So what the majority likes is, um, it probably should be the truth. But uh, fortunately, uh, it's not the case in, in, in the case of uh, opera or in the case of any serious classical music. I'll just give you these names who supported one register singing and uh, then you understand what I mean. The most prominent singer is Enrico Caruso, 
Lily Lemon, Toti Dal Monte, Luciano Pavarotti, Joan Sutherland. I just mentioned those singers who themselves realized that they were singing in one register and not in different three or four registers. That's a great question and let me start from the opposite. Let me say who is not an Apoggio singer. If you hear divisions in voice, then this is not an Apoggio singer. If you hear extreme nasality, it is not an Apoggio singer. If you hear forceful singing, this is not an Apoggio singer. If you hear obvious distortions of the vowels or covering technique, it is not an Apoggio singer. teacher should have a great ear, especially I'm talking about timbral ear, because as practice shows me, some people are unable to tell the difference, subtle or even not so subtle difference in timbral change. So you can claim you're an apoggio singer because you're using the same uh, terminology and basically the same concept, but if you don't have great timbral ear, you won't yourself be able to tell the timbral difference of the notes, so then you won't be just able to hear if your student's really using a correct breathing, correct breathing when registered breathing. So you see concepts are always secondary in our schools and some schools they're trying to give the, the concepts or methods kind of a primary importance and they say uh, there are different methods, very popular, you have to be a certified teacher for that and that, and they just follow the concept. There are many followers of the concepts who not only can teach, but they destroy voices because simply they don't have enough experience and ear to tell the difference. The concept is necessary, but it's always secondary. Appoggio is above any method because true appoggio is based on experience, real hearing of the voice, and of course based and supported by science. There are some teachers who have all the qualities to become appoggio uh, teachers because they have very good uh, taste and very good timbral ear and uh, basically also have experience. I'd say that there's nothing wrong with their ears, but there is something wrong with their concepts. And believe me, uh, those teachers are of course less dangerous than those who operate with right concepts without having a right ear and experience. Those who have right concepts, they picked it up from a teacher or from a book and they just memorize the old principles that are necessary for this particular method of teaching, whether it's a poggio, whether it's a registral division, uh, placement type of um, teaching. They just say without real deep understanding, because understanding in this case is the understanding of the sound, not understanding of the concept. Concept, I, again, I repeat, it's a secondary thing. So understanding the the concept of the teacher or the book, they just simply, uh, sorry for this word, like parrots, repeat the necessary principles for this or that type of school of singing. The other kind uh, are those singers who are really experienced appoggio or in very, very few cases have such a great timbral ear and understanding of the voice that can, they can actually pursue and um, propagate uh, being advocates of one register singing uh, at the same time have wrong concepts because they were taught in the wrong ways and even taught to teach let's say uh, with the passaggio I mean when you're a young student and you're joining a maestro class whether it's famous maestro or not so famous you is is almost like a god to you because he's uh, he has an experience and so you just absorb without any criticism anything you hear and then if you're successful you just repeat like a parrot what he said it doesn't mean that you don't necessarily understand and 
uh, hear the sound properly, but your concepts and your sound thing are incompatible. And that creates also um, some confusion in students. Uh, and, but I say that those type of teachers who have good ears and wrong concepts, they are less dangerous than those who have right concepts and wrong ears. And I almost 100% agree with Ken Templin. He's not a uh, classical singer at all. He's a rock band singer and he just uh, published um, an interesting video on uh, singing, on singing technique, uh, truth about singing. And Ken Templin is, um, is I, I like the way he describes it. He say, isn't that weird? when somebody teaches you how to sing and they cannot even sing mediocrely and they teach you how to sing isn't that weird how is that possible in all instruments that we know nobody attempts you to teach them unless they master their instruments i don't they don't have to be necessarily super virtuosos, but they are masters of their instrument. And in voice, everybody teaches you. The coach you never really even sang anywhere. Isn't that weird? He always repeats that. And I like this guy the way he's, you know, he's... Um Let's examine three types of teachers. Uh, the first type is the singer who achieved himself or herself a great technique but unfortunately cannot really describe it or understand it more objectively and he teaches only by example. Uh, so do it as I do. So it's a pure mimicking process which actually is a very necessary process in, in all beginners uh, because it gives you an, um, way much more information than any concept you can, you know, possibly read or hear. But that sometimes prevents the student on a more advanced level from understanding his own voice. And it's absolutely necessary to achieve a great success because your voice is unique. And no matter who you are going after or mimicking after, sooner or later you have to abandon even the greatest singers as Corelli said I always wanted to be perfect I always wanted to sound like Enrico Caruso but it seems to be impossible and it's it's the best way to do it understand understand your own voice so this kind of approach is great on maybe the beginning level maybe starting uh, intermediate level but it could be a destructive on a more advanced level because um, you and me are not the same Second type of teachers are those who don't show the way because they can't or they're too old or whatever. Uh, very few, I'd, I'd say, like 5% maybe, even less than that. Uh, but they have the correct understanding of the sound and good temporal ear. So they are very helpful for those students who basically teach themselves, but they need second ear they just need second opinion so this type of teachers would be great for advanced level uh, because you don't have to tell me how to feel a sense i know everything i just need you to correct a certain subtle differences and uh, that would be mm, kind of very very confusing for a very beginning level and the third type of teachers who have master's degrees or phds uh, coming from very prestigious universities but who lack real good taste or they lack temporal ear. The concepts are amazing. They seem so logical, so to make sense, but there's, there's a big, big problem with their ears. So no matter what concepts they are covering themselves with, these teachers are the most, the most dangerous teachers for any level. That's the funniest part, because Apoggio's uh, teacher does not fall in any of these three categories. Because Apoggio teacher should have great vocal ear and also have the correct concept, knowing the machinery of singing, knowing how this ideal sound can be performed uh, and not using some kind of traditions 
Not that traditions are necessarily bad, but we always have to look at traditions with a little bit tinge of a smile because those traditions are relative, they are very subjective, and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. If we put it into the religious uh, place and worship them, then we will never really understand the truth. But if we say that, okay, this tradition sometimes works, with a particular person it works, with the other one it doesn't. So it gives you much more way of possibility to, to teach your student and to give him different ways uh, in a so-called vocal menu. The most important role of a vocal teacher, to my point, is to bring his student to experience. When his students achieve a certain experience, he can relate to it, not theoretically, not through concept, but through his own personal sensations. When he achieves this particular level, and he knows how to achieve it through his own sensations, that's an amazing thing. Otherwise, if you just uh, talk about uh, theories and concepts and methods, blah, 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 that is uh, never going to materialize. The materializing uh, the concept, uh, if, you, if you like, is when the student experiences this particular uh, way of doing it uh, and then remembers it and goes from his own sensations. That's a very important thing. <laughs>